Mother, why does Daddy insist on instant Sanka coffee? Your father says instant Sanka is 100% pure coffee and the only instant coffee that lets him sleep. And your father knows best. <laughs> Yes, if Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as Father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by Instant Sanka Coffee and Post 40% Bran Flakes. Mother, next time you're choosing a cereal, remember new Post 40% Bran Flakes give your family all the important keep regular benefits of Bran in a cereal with a delicious new magic oven flavor. Insist on Post Bran Flakes, the cereal preferred and eaten by far more people than any other Bran Flakes. This weekend, get post 40% bran flakes in the new family size 15 ounce package. They're good, and so good for you. Generally speaking, there's nothing especially exciting about lunchtime on Saturday. But excitement ran fairly high on a recent Saturday noon at the White Frame House on Maple Street when Jim phoned from his office that he was coming home with some news for the whole family. Immediately, speculations began flying thick and fast. Like this. Well, didn't Father even give you a hint what this big surprise was? No, Betty. He just told me he'd tell us what it was when he got home, and he should be here by now. Didn't he even give you one tiny little hint? No, you know as much about it as I do. All I know is that he sounded pretty excited over the phone. Maybe he struck oil and we're rich millionaires. <laughs> Let's not get our hopes too high. He probably bought himself a new golf club. No. No, he said this concerned all of us. Oh, I can hardly wait. Can you, bud? Uh-uh. <laughs> What's his stuff in the bowl, Mom? That's stewed prunes and it's not stuff. It's good for you. Better eat some. I don't like it. How do you know you haven't tried any yet? I can tell. I'll eat some, though. Man's got to eat. Oh, I heard him. I heard him. He's home. <laughs> well, don't get excited. Just stay there. You haven't finished eating yet. I'm not hungry. Margaret, I'm home. Yes, dear. Oh, boy. Maybe he's going to take us to the movie. Some surprise that'd be. Well, we're all assembled, I see. The full membership. That's good. What is it, Daddy? What is it, huh? Now, just take it easy, kitten. I'll tell you. What's the surprise, Daddy? Well, let him tell it, Squeegee. Aw, oh, turn blue. <laughs> girls, girls. All right, Father, go ahead now. Well, sir? What's the big surprise? You sounded awfully excited over the phone. And with good reason. Well, don't keep us in suspense any longer. Yeah. I don't intend to. Ladies and gentlemen. Dad. Oh, hello, bud. Ladies and gentlemen. Dad. <laughs> what is it, bud? Please pass the prunes. <laughs> For heaven's sakes, bud, how can you think of stewed prunes at a time like this? Well, a man's got to eat. Now then, if Nature Boy has enough prunes to keep him quiet, here it is. Margaret, do you remember a few weeks ago I mentioned that the home office had written me about certain changes coming up? Y yes. Well, it turned out better than I figured. I got the word today. They want me to take over the Chicago office. Chicago? Mm-hmm. Jim, you... You really mean it? Got the wire from old H.J. himself right here. Here, read it for yourself. Oh, Jim, I can hardly believe it. Chicago? Oh, Father! Can we go too, Daddy? Sure, you have to. We've got to pack up and move there. Wait till I tell Patty Davis. Oh, Father, this is so exciting. I mean, but really, Father. Yes, it sure is. You know, this could lead to a vice presidency someday, honey. But, old man, what have you got to say about all this? Pass the prunes, please. <laughs> Pass the... But is that all you've got to say about this world-shaking event? Huh? What were you saying? Oh, I, I guess I wasn't listening. I was just thinking how good these prunes taste, considering the fact I don't like them. <laughs> oh, fine. Jim, I... I can hardly believe it. Chicago... What's all this about Chicago? We're moving there, numbskull. Moving there? Us? 
Really? Daddy, can I call up Patty Davis and tell her? Sure, go ahead. Oh, wait a minute, Shrimp. I'm going to call Joe first and tell him. Oh, man, this is crazy. I'll get it. I'll get it. Gee, Chicago, we can go to the theater every night. Well, not every night, but we can see a lot of the good shows. Hello? And big league baseball every day. Who? Oh, just a minute. Betty, it's for you. Ralph. Oh, him. I don't want to talk to him. Well, he's waiting. Let him wait. Serves him right that I'm moving away. Let him have Janie Liggett. I don't care. The least you can do is talk to him. I am never going to talk to that... that retreaded Romeo again. (laughs) Okay, I'll tell him that. Oh, no, you don't. I'll tell him. Women, women, women. Margaret, you uh, look a little stunned. Well, I... I am. It's not every day you pack up and move to Chicago. (laughs) Yes, Ralph? When? Tomorrow afternoon. Well, I'd just love to go, Ralph, but unfortunately, we're moving to Chicago tomorrow morning. (laughs) No, we're not. No, really. It'll take us at least two weeks to get squared away around here. I am not kidding. It'll take us that long to sell the house. Sell the house? Mm Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be better if we just rented it? What, Ralph? At least at first. Well, I'm afraid not. We'll need the money to buy a place in Chicago. I don't know why you should be so upset, Ralph. You can take Janie Liggett tomorrow. You seem to be quite enamored of her. Well, it certainly looks like it to me. Hurry up, Betty. Hang up, Tallulah. i got to call Joe. <laughs> <laughs> just put it all in a letter and send it to me in Chicago. Yes, we are moving, aren't we, Father? Not tomorrow morning, we're not. Father says yes. <laughs> well, I don't know about tonight. I'll think it over. Call me later. I will. Goodbye. You know what he'll probably do now? He probably will call Janie. Well, you told him to. He's deceitful, that's what he is. <laughs> Bud, I'm next on the phone. No, you're not. I am. Well, let's get this phoning over with. We've got a lot of planning, a lot of packing. This would be a good time to get rid of a lot of old junk, too. No use dragging a lot of stuff to Chicago. We don't need. Hello? Is Joe there? When Bud gets through, Margaret, you'd better call the junk man. We can make a nice deal on a lot of old worthless stuff. Joe? Hey, boy, have I got something cool to tell you. Yeah, man, this is real nervous. We're moving to Chicago. Chicago. Well, just a minute. Hey, Dad, what state's that in? (laughs) Oh, for heaven's sake, Bud, you know that. Didn't you learn it in school? Well, sure, but that was last semester. (laughs) Oh, I see. Isn't Chicago a state, Daddy? No kidding. It's a city in Illinois. Joe, it's in Illinois. Yeah. Huh? Oh, just a minute. Dad, uh, name some big place in Chicago. Oh, uh, Comiskey Park, or... Joe, we're going to live in Comiskey Park. (laughs) No, bud, that's a baseball... Oh, yeah, yeah, it's the high-classes place there. (laughs) Big homes, all that. Oh, me. Hang up, bud. Uh, i got to hang up now, Joe. I'll talk to you later. Okay, boy, Goodbye. If Ralph takes Janie, I'll die. I'll simply die. For goodness sakes, Betty. A minute ago, you said you were all through with Ralph. Well, I am, but I don't want Janie to have him either. Can I call Patty now? Uh, Look, kitten, why don't you just run next door and tell Patty in person? That'll be a lot faster. Okay, Daddy. I'll be right back. Now, the rest of you better get upstairs and dig into those closets. We'll make a big pile of everything we're going to get rid of. I'll start in the den. Don't you want some lunch first? No, I don't think I'm hungry now. Well, everything's cold anyway. I'll call the junk man. Oh, me. We're going to have to take that phone out of here or we'll never get out of town. I'll get it. Probably Janie and Ralph announcing their engagement. (laughs) Hello? Oh, yes, just a minute. For you, Mother. Oh, oh, dear. We'll never get started. Yes? Oh, yes, Mrs. Stewart. Yes, it's true. Jim's taking over the office there. Boy, it's sure getting around. (laughs) Well, we don't know yet. We thought perhaps we might take a place in Comiskey Park. (laughs) No, Margaret, no. Uh, uh, Just temporarily, that is. (laughs) Uh, Look, kids, we're not getting any work done standing around the phone here. Let's get upstairs and get going. 
Oh, yes, it'll be wonderful. So many advantages for the children. Margaret, call the junk man when you get through. Yes, Jim. Uh, what did you say, Mrs. Stewart? Now, come on, kids. Okay, Dad. I'm going to have to have a lot of new clothes, Father. I'm not going to wear my old Springfield junk in Chicago. Well, I'll let you in on a little secret, Princess. If this Chicago deal works out the way I think it will, I have a hunch we'll be able to afford a new dress or two. Daddy! Yes, kitten? Daddy, Mr. Davis says we're going to have to move. Well, that's what we're intending to do. I mean, after we get to Chicago. He said Kamizzi Park is a baseball field. I know it. That's what I've been trying to tell everyone. That's where the Chicago White Sox play their games. They do? Oh, boy, we'll get to see all the games free. <laughs> Look, Bud, we're not going to live in Comiskey Park. Why did you tell us we were? <laughs> I never said that we did. Jim, the junk man will be here in a couple of hours. And I also called the real estate man so he could put an ad in the Sunday morning paper. Oh, good. And I... Um... Oh, dear. There's the phone again. By George, I believe our leaving is the biggest news in Springfield since Calvin Coolidge went through here. <laughs> Where was he going? <laughs> I don't remember. Now, come on, kids, upstairs, all of you. It's for you, Jim. Hmm? Long distance. The home office is calling. Oh? Is it H.J.? I think so. Good. I'll take it in the den. Come on, children, upstairs now. All of you. Okay, Mother. Gee, I wish we could leave tonight. What does Chicago look like? Is it awful real big? Hello? Hello, Anderson. Jim? Yes, yes, this is he. This is H.J. Oh, yes. Uh, how are you, H.J.? Good, good. Jim, I think I've got some good news for you. Well, <laughs> I don't know if I can stand any more today, H.J. <laughs> well, Jim, I've been talking with Letterly out there in Chicago. Yes. And he's got all the results of his medical checkups and whatnot, and his doc says that he's not in such bad shape as they figured. Oh, well, that is good news. So he's decided to stay on, and you won't have to take over the Chicago office after all. I... I, I what? I guess you're pretty relieved, eh, Jim? <laughs> well, I don't blame you. It's a cumbersome job there. You wouldn't want it. Uh, no, uh, of course not. And you wouldn't want to move your family there. Well, no, uh, of course, this is going to be an awful disappointment to them because they... Uh... What'd you say, Jim? What'd you say? I can't hear you very well. Uh... Uh, nothing, nothing. Well, I just wanted to pass the good news on to you, Jim. Well, uh, uh, yeah, much obliged. Keep up the good work there, Jim. Keep up the old quotas. And I'll see you at the district convention next month. Yeah, yeah, fine. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, fine. Father, are you through with the phone, Father? I want to call Janie and find out why she hasn't called me. Uh, Betty, I, uh... Just talked to H.J., and he... Uh... Boy, are we getting popular. The reporter was just here from the newspaper. The newspaper? They heard we were leaving from the real estate man. Isn't this exciting, Father? Uh, look, Betty, I... Gee, I just had a horrible thought. What if something should happen now to keep us from going? I'd die if that happened. I'd simply die. Oh, me. <laughs> well, I've got to get upstairs and sort out my things. You better get going, too, Father. You'll be caught up a tree. <laughs> I'm already up the tree. <laughs> Way out on the end of its longest limb. <laughs> well, it looks like fate has dropped a real hot potato into Father's lap. In a moment, we'll see how he solves this complex problem. But first... Here's a simple answer to a problem that may have been bothering you mothers. Perhaps you know that bran is good for your family because it provides important keep regular benefits. But perhaps you've even served it, but discover that the folks weren't keen about its flavor. Well, post 40% bran flakes now have a delicious new magic oven flavor and crunchy texture that tastes simply wonderful. Fact is, it's so good. Post brand flakes are preferred and eaten by far more people than any other brand flakes. Yes, post brand flakes is the cereal to serve because it provides the vital keep regular benefits of bran in a cereal with a delicious flavor. Remember, for goodness sake, eat post brand flakes. So good and so good for you. Post brand flakes are bought by far more people than any other brand flakes. So this weekend, 
Get Post 40% Bran Flakes in the family size 15-ounce package. They're good, and so good for you. The White Frame House on Maple Street is now the scene of more crazy, mixed-up emotions than any one of its members realizes. In the face of the gay moving day preparations going on, Jim is having a difficult time finding the courage and diplomatic words to break the news that the Chicago deal is off. In addition, there is another strange turn of events beginning to develop. Like this. Mother. Yes, Betty? I... I kind of hate to say this, but... Well, every time I come across a dress I'm going to get rid of, it reminds me of some good time I've had. And... You know, I don't think I want to move to Chicago. I want to stay here. Shh, for heaven's sake, don't let your father hear you say that. Well, what I mean is... I know. I have the same feeling. So many people have been calling up, and you suddenly realize that this is where all our friends are. Now we'll have to start all over again, a brand new life. Well, do you think there might be some chance of father reconsidering? Oh, no, you mustn't even suggest that. Your father has his heart set on this. And if he thought for one minute that we weren't in full accord, it would upset him terribly. Yes, I know it. It's our duty as a family to go with your father wherever his work takes him and make the best of it. I suppose so. But every time I get to thinking of Janie Liggett having Ralph all to herself... Oh, (laughs) now stop that, Betty. That's just something you're building up in your own mind. You said you were through with him anyway. I am, but I don't want him to enjoy it so much. I want him to suffer a little. Mommy, how far is Chicago? Oh, pretty far. Is it too far so I couldn't come back and play with Patty on Saturday? (laughs) Oh, my, yes. Then I don't want to go. Angel, we've got to go. And whatever you do, I want you to make your father feel that this is the happiest thing that ever happened to us. But, gee, Mommy... This is very important, Kathy. So please do it. Promise? Oh, I guess so. Now, you get your boxes of old toys to the throwaway pile. And, Betty, will you help me carry these things downstairs? Okay. I'll say one thing for this move. We're getting rid of a lot of junk we should have thrown away years ago. I wish Father would never gotten that telegram from old H.J. Well, there's nothing we can do about it now. Maybe I could get a job here and rent a little apartment and... There's your father at the foot of the stairs. Remember what I said now. Okay. Careful, don't trip there. You've got a lamp cord dangling mighty low. Uh, I'll watch it. Here, here, let me take that stuff. Uh, all right, fine. Uh, here you are. Got it all? Yeah, I got it. Whew, I've got about three more loads just like this upstairs. Well, uh, wait a minute. Before you get any more, there's something I uh, want to, uh, to discuss. Yes, dear? Margaret, I've been thinking... And actually, there are certain disadvantages to living in a big city. Oh, but think of the advantages. We're all very, very happy we're going, dear. Yeah, uh, well... It's the most thrilling thing I can think of, Father. It is, huh? Oh, I wouldn't miss this for anything in the world. Hmm. Come on, we'd better get moving. We haven't time to stand around here. Well, wait, Margaret. Uh, Let's suppose that I turn down the Chicago job. Turn it down. Well, after all, it's a big, cumbersome office. I wouldn't actually have much time to myself. Oh, and... now you hush that kind of talk. Well, really, I'm not too keen about it. And... <gasps> Jim Anderson, you listen to me. If you do anything to keep us from moving to Chicago, we'll never speak to you again. Mm. So, let's not have any more of that kind of talk. Yeah. Well, look, Margaret... Oh, there's the door, dear. See who it is. Yeah, okay. Mother. Shh. Mother, he sort of sounds like he doesn't actually want to go. Well, certainly. But can't you see what he's doing? He's noticed that our enthusiasm for the trip is wearing off. And he's trying to give us an out. An out? He's pretending that he doesn't want to go, so we'll have the courage to tell him we don't want to go. He's so considerate. Well, maybe we should tell him. Oh, heavens, no. We've got to work all the harder to convince him that we do want to go. It's the uh, junk man, Margaret. Shall I tell him to go? Of course not. 
We don't want to drag the stuff to Chicago with us. Well, I was just thinking, uh, in case we decided not to go... Have him come in. Well, okay. Ought to get rid of it anyway. Tell him to give us an estimate on that pile of stuff in the living room. Kathy, hurry up with those boxes of toys. The junk man's here. I'm coming. Betty, after you dump that stuff, there's more things up in our room. Maybe you can get Bud to help you. He's down in the basement picking things over. Uh, right in here, sir. Oh, yeah. That's fine. Nice place you got here, Mr. Anderson. Oh, yeah, well, we like it. Uh, oh, it's a shame you're going to leave it. Well, uh, to tell the truth... To tell the truth, we're glad to be getting out of here. But, Margaret... We need a change. It couldn't have come at a better time. Moving clean to Chicago, huh? That's right. And we're all thrilled about it. Uh, what do you think all this stuff is worth here? Well, I don't know. I have to look her over. See what we got here. That lamp is broke. That's not worth anything. It can be fixed. Hey, wait a minute. What are these slacks doing in here? I still wear those. Around the yard and... Well, you're certainly not going to wear them in Chicago. Margaret, there's something I've got to tell you. Later, dear. Let's get this settled first. Yes, but... Hey, that's my fishing jacket in there. Well, it's all worn out. Oh, it's just getting nicely broken in. Take that out of there. <laughs> you folks better make up your mind what's in and what ain't. It's all in. No, it ain't. Mommy. <laughs> oh, good. Put it on the pile. I took out a few things I want to keep. I see. Well, wait a minute. The box is empty. Just one broken doll dish in there. Uh, Kathy, I'll bet you hate to leave Patty Davis and all your little friends here, don't you? This is the happiest thing that ever happened to us. <laughs> Dad! Do you want me to figure a price on this stuff or not? Certainly. Go right ahead. Dad! Where's Bud calling from? In the basement. Better see what he wants. He's supposed to have some more things for the throwaway pile. Dad! Coming, Bud! Most of this stuff's in such bad shape, I really shouldn't buy any of it. But Dad, I... Dad, can you help me get this up the stairs? It's too heavy for me. What in the world is it, anyway? A log cabin? No, it's that raft Joe and I started building last summer. Do you think it'll fit in the van all right? Oh, Bud, don't drag that thing up here. Well, I don't want to leave it in the basement. There's a lake at Chicago, isn't there? Well, yes, but... Well, do you think Joe could come up and spend a couple of months with it so we could finish the raft? Bud, in the first place, Lake Michigan is no place for a raft. And in the second place... Dad, do I have to go? What? I mean... Could I maybe stay here, live over at the Phillipses or something? I, well, I don't want to leave Springfield, Dad. Well, thank heaven someone wants to stay here. Huh? But I have news for you. We're not leaving. We're not? No, the Chicago deal fell through. Well, what are we brewing up all the storm over packing for, then? Well, it's hard to explain, but your mother and the girls are so excited and so thrilled over going that... I just haven't had the heart to tell them differently. Well, heck, I'll tell them. No, 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 wait. <laughs> this uh, has to be done diplomatically. You don't realize what a disappointment it's going to be to them. What are you going to do? Wait till they get all packed up and then tell them? <laughs> no, that would be even worse. Maybe I'd better let them take a trip to Chicago, spend a couple of weeks there. Maybe they won't like it as well as they think they will. You mean, you mean you and me batch it alone here? Yeah. Oh, boy, that sounds real cool. Let's do it. Come on, let's tell them now. All right. I uh, hope it works. It will. We can get Joe and Claude to stay with us, too, and we can cook out in the backyard and... Don't let them hear you. Uh, let me do the explaining. Well, no, I don't know. Maybe I'd better keep that dress after all. Lady, will you please make up your mind? Oh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'll keep it. And now then, how much for all the rest of the things? All the rest? Mm -hmm. All that's left is one broke doll dish and a cracked lamp. <laughs> Thirty-five cents. <laughs> Margaret, what's uh, happened here? Oh, I don't know, Jim. It, well, it just seems hard to part with old things. Yeah, I know what you mean. Go on, Dad. Tell them. Uh, Margaret, I have a suggestion. Well, Jim, I have a suggestion, too. Moving is, well, it's not easy just to pick up and move to a new town on such short notice. 
Maybe you'd better go on to Chicago, and we'll come later. Oh, no, you've got to go. <laughs> but we don't want to. What? We don't want to leave, Daddy. Kathy. Gee, I forgot. I didn't mean to tell. Wait a minute. Now, what's this about not wanting to leave? Jim, you know that we'll go anywhere you want to. But we'd sure rather stay here. We like Springfield. <laughs> well, you know what? So do I. And you know something else? We're not leaving. We're not? I didn't get the job after all. Oh, Father! Good for Daddy! Good for Daddy! Holy cow. <laughs> uh, folks. Oh, yes? Please don't think me an impatient man because I ain't. But do you mind if we close this big deal? <laughs> oh, certainly. Now, uh, what do we have? One busted lamp, 35 cents. Hmm. Well, on second thought, we better keep that. What? <laughs> it uh, was a wedding present. But wait, uh, here's uh, five dollars for your trouble. Five dollars? Why? Oh, I don't know. You might want to take a trip to Chicago sometime. <laughs> Hello, Jerry Marshall. Well, the Andersons certainly lost their enthusiasm for moving to Chicago when they realized what they'd have to leave behind, didn't they? And you know, I think their reaction is pretty typical. Most of us lose our enthusiasm for things if there's a penalty attached. For instance, I'll bet many of you would love to have a cup of coffee right now. But you're afraid it'll cost you hours of sleep tonight. Well, if you make it instant Sanka coffee, you'll still be able to sleep. Because it's the caffeine in coffee that keeps many people awake. Ninety-seven percent of the caffeine has been removed from instant Sanka. So why pay a price for that late-at-night cup of coffee? Drink instant Sanka coffee. Buy it in the large economy size jar. You'll like its flavor. You'll love the way it lets you sleep. <laughs> Well, in spite of the rumors flying around Springfield that the Andersons were moving to Chicago, flying to New York, sailing to London, the occupants of the white frame house are still solidly entrenched on Maple Street. And though life in the household has almost returned to normal, the telephone continues to echo the tumult of the day. It's like this. Oh, no, not again. Well, news travels fast in this town. Hello? Oh, how are you, Fred? Tomorrow night? Yeah, sounds great. 7.30? Good. I'll see you then. Goodbye. Who was that, dear? That was Fred Spencer. They want us to come over tomorrow night. Oh, Jim, we can't. You know as well as I do that it's a going away party. Why didn't you explain? There was no need to. But we're not going away. I told you news travels fast in this town, honey. This is a welcome home party. <laughs> next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Until then, good night and good luck from the makers of Post 40% Bran Flakes, the cereal preferred and eaten by far more people than any other Bran Flakes, and Instant Sanka, the delicious coffee that lets you sleep. In our cast were Gene Vanderpile as Margaret, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, Helen Strom, and Parley Bear. Calcium helps grown-ups to a more vigorous life. And now there's calcium in hard wheat meal. Calcium helps your body run smoothly. And now there is calcium in hard wheat meal. Calcium helps you to enjoy a more active life. And now there's calcium in hard wheat meal. Yes, a one-ounce serving contains one-third of your daily calcium needs, and wheat meal is a whole wheat cereal, smooth and creamy rich. Cooks instantly without lumping. Just follow new directions. Get new post wheat meal with more calcium than any other cereal, hot or cold. Father Knows Best, based on characters created by Ed James, was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Now, 
play Truth or Consequences on the NBC Radio Network.